AM 96.3 FM, The Source. I, if I had a, a, a thing I could change about myself, I would I would want myself to be as loyal as a dog can be. Mm-hmm. I have um, I, I've probably hundreds of stories I could tell you, and so do you, about the loyalty of a dog. Let me just tell you one, okay? I had to go to Chattanooga a couple of years ago, and my dog was really um, getting old and had a huge tumor on her elbow, and... And it was bleeding, and it needed to constantly have the dressing changed. Um, and I knew she wasn't long for this world, you know. And I just prayed that if I left her at a facility, uh, what do you call it, a daycare, doggy daycare, I just, I just prayed that she would still be alive when I got home. I knew she was, like, close, and they did too. So I brought her over there, and then I was halfway to Chattanooga, and my son called, and he said, Dad, I'm bringing, I'm bringing the dog home. To your place, because my my son and is an adult. He doesn't live with me. So, anyway, so he he brought the dog home and he kept caring for her. He kept going over there to take care of her, but she waited there for me. Mm-hmm. And I was only gone for the weekend. So when yeah. I when I came home, I knew that uh, I might open the door and she might not be alive. But she heard me and she stumbled out and was wagging her tail and was so happy to see me and I was like oh my gosh you're like on your deathbed and you're greeting me like you did mm-hmm. all your life yeah oh my gosh she I'm, loves you I, it's part of me that re- regrets telling the story because now I'm feeling sad but but it's just it's just that loyalty of a dog and you see it all the time in stories right um, I, I remember there was a story on um, the internet I saw of a, a German shepherd lying on the floor by the coffin of a soldier who had died right just they are unbelievable animals, right? Susan Bahari has captured some of that amazingness in dogs in a sculpture she has done called Stubby Salutes. If you're watching the the podcast right now, that's uh, that's Susan's face on there. Let me put the the sculpture she's done on there, and then we'll go back to Susan's face. Susan is um, is an amazing artist. She's created some amazing pieces of work. I was just on her website, uh, BahariStudios.com, and we'll spell that for you in just a bit. Susan is an internationally acclaimed artist, a renowned sculptor, uh, a leader in creating some of the more celebrated service animal monuments in the animal-slash-human bond throughout the world. Um, She's the creator of Stubby Salutes, and that's the uh, the, vi- the picture you're looking at right now if you're looking at the video. Uh, Stubby is the official Sergeant Stubby life-size bronze statue to honor this World War I hero dog named Stubby, one of the earliest and most famous American military service dogs and the inseparable companion of World War I soldier Robert Conroy. Wow, this is beautiful. Susan Bahari, it's an honor to have you on our show. Good morning, Susan. Well, good morning. Thank you so much. Glad to be with you. Where are you? I am in the San Francisco Bay Area, just north of the Golden Gate Bridge. Well, thank you for getting up early. I have two friends who live out in San Francisco. They always send pictures of the bridge. They like <laughs> I know, we're obsessed. <laughs> the bridge and the wine, uh, the, uh, the what do you call the the grapevines, right? Yeah. Yes, the vineyards. They're wonderful. The vineyards, yeah. They always send me pictures of that stuff. And the food. They like taking pictures of their food. So thank you for being on the air. When did this, can I ask you when you started doing sculpture? Do, the the one of Stubby is bronze, right? But I was looking on your site. You do yes. all kinds of mediums, right? Yes, I do. Uh, mostly bronze. I also do fine art acrylic, which looks like a crystal, in it, but it's cast acrylic. That is amazing. And I do stainless steel work, too. Yeah, thank you. I did look at the now, acrylic. I, when I saw the word acrylic, I clicked on it. I, th- I expected a painting, but it's a sculpture. Yeah, I know. Most people do. <laughs> yeah, it's really kind of magical. Light passes through it, and uh, you can get internal images inside the material, and it's just a magical kind of medium. What drew you to this? What, what drew you to do animals in, in the first? Let's start with a uh, broader topic than stubby. What drew drew you to wanting to sculpt different different animals? Well, you know, I started because I started showing dogs when I was fifteen, and I really understood the animal human bond. You know, I just loved my dogs. I they became champions, and I showed them, and it was wonderful to really train them and understand that and I did bred some dogs and and you know and then um 
I and I always loved sculpting, um, but I decided, you know, um, well, I was at actually a dog show when I happened to meet an incredible person, Dr. William Putney, who led the war dog platoon in Guam and was the veterinarian for the Marine Corps in World War II down there in Guam. And he was spearheading a monument to do our country's first official war dog memorial, Always Faithful. Wow. Which I, yeah, I, he asked me to apply to that, and I was so honored and thrilled to get that commission. And that was back in 1994, and, it's, and it was unveiled at the Pentagon, and it sits at the Marine Corps War Dog Cemetery on the naval base on Guam, as right? well as other places, yeah, like the National Museum of the Marine Corps. We have a few castings, you know, different veterinary mm -hmm. schools. So that was my start. But from then, I just... You know, I really, it opened my eyes to the incredible service and sacrifice of our veterans. I got to really meet them firsthand and hear the stories, and that just really moved me because they do so much, you know, for the rest of us to keep us safe and free. So it's pretty inspiring. And the Stubby's role in the um, uh, war was by accident because now dogs are trained to do this that and the other thing but stubby is like the grandfather of the whole movement yes absolutely <laughs> yes stubby wandered on to the campus of yale uh in connecticut and he while the soldiers were in training and they befriended each other especially as you mentioned robert conroy who became his inseparable companion and then uh when time and of course he trained him some tricks and when time came to go to war conroy smuggled him in his jacket and put him aboard the ship oh wow well yeah and then when the commander found out that was not a good thing at first, but um, what he had, what uh, Conroy had steady do was to get up in a special trick, was to get up on his haunches and do the salute for the commander. And once he wow. did that, wow. he was in. <laughs> yeah. and, that, and, that's what, and that's what you have uh, captured on, in, in the, the bronze statue of Stubby, right? What is he wearing? What is, yes. that, what is the garment? Thanks, thanks for asking. <laughs> he is wearing the chamois jacket that the women of this town in France called Chateau Thierry had made for him because they were so grateful for his helping to save their town in World War I because he alerted to the mustard gas attack that was coming into the town. He would bark and that, that wow. was one of the great things he did. He, he alerted to that. Wow. He alerted to artillery shells. He did other things. When I when I was a kid, I, I grew up on Long Island, New York, and um, oh. I, I would go to a movie theater, and I would walk to it. And to get to it with a shortcut, I had to cut through a pet cemetery. And one uh -huh. of the one of the uh, graves that I remember seeing very vividly, and I don't remember the dog's name, was a dog's grave, and it was a dog who had served in the military, and uh, it had his picture on the stone it was like a the, the, a photograph that was somehow i guess embedded in in acrylic of some sort and it was just protected from mm. the weather and it was just and I, I remember it and i always thought wow isn't that amazing that they have uh, a dog in, in in the service i didn't even know there was such a thing when i was a kid you know oh my god where on long island may i ask uh well i the the cemetery is in wanto do you know the the area oh yeah yeah, I'm from Long Island. I'm from Huntington, Long Island. You're from Huntington? Okay, so do you know where, yes. where Wanto is? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, I do. So I, yeah, I, I lived in Merrick, and I used to cut through there. There was, it's, I, I can't, oh. it's been so long, I can't remember exactly what I did. But. Yeah, but that's touching. It, it's very t touching. And Stubby, you know, um, I, I the other thing that he did was... You know, believe it or not, he could distinguish between sort of the English language and the German language. And when there was a when there was a, a, a American soldier that was caught in no man's land, you know, between the trenches in World War One, he would actually go to the soldier's side and comfort the soldier until help came. Wow. And uh, yeah, he he was an amazing dog. He uh, and when he came home, he was a huge hero. You know, he met three presidents. He was in parades. He was on the front page, and he was mostly like a real morale booster, you know, during the war and when he came home. 
And uh, this isn't something you took lightly. You did a lot of research on this, speaking to a lot of different yeah. people and also mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the, the yeah. family of Robert Conroy. Absolutely. Um, the family was amazing. Um, Ann Balsam, who wrote um, the, the Sergeant Stubby book for both children and for adults, she was so helpful. Um, and you know, it was very important to me to get the details very correct and to capture the dog, not just in spirit and physical qualities, but to capture that the jacket and everything, you know, the way it should be. And Kastebi is stuffed at the Smithsonian Institute. Oh my! And, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I felt it'd be very important to bring him to life, sort of in a bronze, in a special way. And uh, you yeah. also have uh, the, uh, uh, diff the the two different paws depict depicting different things. Yes, um, I have his. You know, his right paw is in. It represents his sense of duty. You know, and. Um, and so his left paw rep is reaching out because he was such a friendly dog. He gave so much uh, to the soldiers and to the spirit of all people that it's sort of the, friend, the paw friendship and the paw, paw of duty. <laughs> we, we, live yeah. in, we live in a horse town here in Florida, and uh, so there are a lot of statues yeah. of horses. Mm -hmm. And once in a while, you'll find a statue of a particular horse. And and I don't know enough about them to know if if the the likeness is captured. I don't even know if that's possible. But I think. But in dogs, I do. I mean, a dog. I mean, so how did you get the likeness? I mean, did you have a really clear photograph? Well, I had some old photographs that I blew up, and I had some dogs that I found. I found one just walking on the street. I have a way of, you know, saying, excuse me, but could I talk to you for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> there was this beautiful dog and these lovely people who let me use their dog as a model. Another uh, breeder let me use her dog as a model because, two, two breeders, because it this dog was a mixed breed. Probably a, sort of like an American oh, Staffordshire okay. uh, type bully dog mixed with like a Boston Terrier. So, that that made it, and then to get a dog to get an absolute is not an easy thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't think take so. That, take that from me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Did you come up with the purple poppy? Yes, I I well I didn't come up with it, but I'm very proud to bring it to the United States. Um, <clears throat> the purple poppy represents, you know, much like I should back up and say that. Most people, many people know that the red poppy represents the soldiers who have died in all the wars around the world. And, you know, more recently in, you know, UK and New Zealand and Australia, the purple poppy has been uh, representing the dogs, you know, and other animals who have died in war. We're talking about mules, donkeys, pigeons, um, uh, the horses and the dogs. So I, I've been asked by the Australian War Animals Memorial Association to bring the purple poppy concept to the United States. And what it will represent here is all our service animals. I mean, the police, you know, the dogs in law enforcement wow. and the military search and rescue assistance animals, wow. you know, all our assistance guide dog pairs. And I'm proposing a, a monument, the first of its kind, about that that will also incorporate that, that I hope to to have probably either in San Francisco or the D.C. area. So the, on, you know, on, the, and, uh, on your yeah. website, you have a, a, a picture of the National Service Animals Monument. Is that the one in Guam? Or where's that one? No, no, that is the one that I'm proposing. And the short website, the short name for that, which also ties to my website, is just serviceanimalsmonument.com. Com. Okay. And that's the one that is my sort of dream. I'm spearheading with a lot of very um, influential, wonderful people to try and bring awareness to this important subject because we need our service animals now more than ever in every way. When, and we need to support their handlers. Uh, when the statue is unveiled this month, Will you be there, and also as Robert Conroy's remains there? Uh, no, his remains are not there, but um, but I will certainly be there. I, I'm so looking forward to it. 
uh, we'll have a, a ceremony there at the Trees of Honor Veterans Park. And it's like Stubby's coming back home, you know? I mean, wow. she want to cry. It's wow, it's such, such a touching story. Yeah. It's, it's such a touching I mean, story, and, and it's such a, you know, yeah. it, it does it does a couple of things. It, it kind of speaks to uh, our relationship with dogs. It also speaks yeah. to our uh, understanding that, um, you know, we don't do this alone. We have, uh, we have corgis, right? Oh, yes, I said, you do. I said, I said that for Dave. Dave just walked past the window. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but I mean, uh, it's amazing that you were able to do all of this. Your, your, um, your artwork is amazing, by the way. I'm, just, oh, I'm browsing through your well, website as we're talking. Well, um, you know, I really appreciate that. I mean, yeah, I wanted to say something for your horse-loving community. Okay. Because I think they'll appreciate this, and it ties into World War One. Um, if they go on my website, I know they're going to be very touched by this. Um, we, in, I, you know, it was commissioned. It, well, actually, this past July, I did. Um, I did. I was commissioned by the Australian War Animals Memorial uh, Association to do the first ever, you know, monument to all the animals who died on the Western Front in World War One. That's nine million. Yeah. And we're talking about the horses. That, and this is in Pozier, France, on the battlefield, on the actual battlefield where soldiers and animals still are. I mean, thousands of Australian and other, and the, and the uh, other side, and every, you know, animals that still are there in this beautiful, vast battlefield. And so uh, I sculpted a horse which is uh, emerging spirits. It's a rising horse. And in the mane of this horse are the other animals who serve, you know, the pigeon, the mule, the donkey, and the horse. And that's for all the Australians. And then I did a dog head. And the dog represents all animals that have that died in, in, in the Western Front. And uh, his little collar says, our spirit lives on. And it's oh. a beautiful m- memorial there. Yeah. And when the statue Very is, touching. and when the statue is unveiled uh, this uh, uh, Memorial Day, there's going to be a ceremonies plus a lot of service dogs will be there that the children and the families can meet. Yes, there will be. There will be that, and and we'll have uh, we'll first be honoring a lot of the military who are there at the Veterans Park with the bell ringing of the bell, and we'll have, uh, you know, I have to say that the U.S. War Dogs Association is an amazing association, and they will come and speak. They have supported ma- the making of the Stubby Monument, and they do mm. so much mm. to help the military and their dogs in like amazing ways, uh, and they'll be there and. They'll There'll be other speakers, and uh, yeah, so it, it's an honor. It, you know, there's so many amazing stories, as you said before. You know, Susan, I have there's, a. It never ends. I have a question, and I hope it's not inappropriate. How? Okay, I'm going to ask two questions in one, that and then it won't seem so inappropriate. The first one that sounds inappropriate <laughs> is how much does it cost, and the second one is is there a way we can help you? Because when you do this, I, I'm oh. thinking it's got to be out of pocket. I mean, this is. It's got to be yeah. a fortune well, to make I one of these things. Mission. Well, I am commissioned to do these, and you know the ra- it ranges in different prices. You know from uh, what is involved in you know the size of the monument. You know, uh-huh. so something like the stubby. You know, we're raising fifty thousand for the for the sculpture of stubby, and you know for other for bigger monuments like the ones I'm proposing, that's a very major uh, price tag to do yeah. that. But you know, you have to uh, got to be in the millions. You have to do what you think is right. <laughs> So, yeah, so yeah. okay, so for that, can we help out at all? I mean, uh, oh, that's so sweet. I, well, absolutely. I, I honestly, you can. I mean, uh, there, on the web, there's a website. You can also um, go to uh, Trees of Honor, or you can contact uh, me on my website, or you can go to the uh, Trees of Honor uh, Veterans Park, and uh, they are taking. Um, uh, you know, donations, and they're in Connecticut, so that's one way. And uh, there's also Sergeant Stubby Salutes, which is a family's um, uh, website uh, that you can make a donation to. So uh, we appreciate that. They're still in the process of doing that. So it's at cttreesofhonor.com? Oh, CT Trees. Yes. That's what I had wrong. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, thank you. Yes. Okay, and as in Connecticut. Okay, 
Um, how'd you end up in San Francisco? A Long Island girl, Connecticut girl. Um, <laughs> I, I left my heart in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> well, what you are doing is so amazing because you're raising awareness, not, of, not just of the service dogs that have helped our country throughout the centuries, but also the service dogs that are helping our soldiers now when they return home with PTSD or other kinds of ailments. Absolutely. I, I want this monument that I'm proposing to really also help in that regard to raise awareness of that and many other things that our animals do and hopefully raise some funds if we ever we do this and we get more extra money, you know, to, to also do that. It's very important. By the way, I, I googled uh, Wantaw Pet Cemetery just to see, and a, a word came yeah. up. A word came up that I'm guessing is going to remind you of something. The word was by the way. Do you remember by the way? The bite away homes on Long, on Long Island? No? Oh, that is you No, know, it's ringing a bell way in the back of my brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. me too. When I saw it, too, it's bite away, it looks like, but everybody pronounced it bite away. Oh, oh. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's the you. name of the cemetery, I think. I, I just Googled it, so oh. I'm assuming it's the same one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Susan, you've been a joy to talk to. Thank you for sharing your talents and your, your love with us, and, uh, and, and congratulations on finding finding something really amazing to do with your talents. I, I think this is, there's a lot of people are talented. They don't know what to do with it, you know? Right. But you've got something really I good know. you're doing with it, you know? Well, I would, well, you know what I would say to that, and thank you so much. I would say that everybody should always try something that they think they can't do, including art, because sometimes we're just intimidated, but we can really do it much better than we know we can. You don't know till you try. You you just said a mouthful. Thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We'll be right back. Fox News Radio. I'm Chris Foster. There's been a shooting at a high school in Santa Fe, Texas. There are people hurt. We don't know how badly or how many.